Born Vera Jane Palmer in 1933 in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, to parents Herbert William and Vera Jeffrey Palmer, Jane Mansfield always knew she wanted to be famous. Teenage Jane plastered her walls with photos of movie idols and dreamed of stardom. In 1936, a big part of Jane's world came crashing down when her beloved father died suddenly of a heart attack. Herbert Palmer's passing left a void in Jane's life. As Raymond Strait, author of The Tragic Secret Life of Jane Mansfield, explained to Biography, Jane grew up always looking for a father and looking to men for a father image, and she never found it. At 16, Vera Jane Palmer, not yet out of high school, eloped with 20-year-old Paul Mansfield. Jane kept the marriage under wraps and continued to attend high school and live with her mother and stepfather. However, when Jane became pregnant, the secret came out. In recalling her mother's reaction to her pregnancy, Jane had this to say to her friend and biographer May Mann. Mama said I had ruined my life and her life. Then she relented and bought me a pretty white wedding dress and we had a wedding of sorts. But I always remembered her telling me never to expect help from her. On November 9, 1950, Jane and Paul Mansfield welcomed daughter Jane Marie into the world. However, motherhood would do nothing to diminish Jane's ambition. After Jane's high school graduation, the young couple enrolled at Southern Methodist University in Dallas. Like many young newlyweds, Jane and Paul Mansfield struggled financially. Nevertheless, they juggled parenthood, classes, and work to make a life for themselves and their baby daughter. With her husband away for ROTC summer camp, Jane left their daughter in the care of her parents while she headed for California to study drama at the University of California, Los Angeles. At the end of the summer session, the Mansfields briefly returned to Texas, but the Korean War necessitated Paul's activation in the Army Reserve and a move to Camp Gordon near Atlanta. Georgia. Jane's habit of sunbathing and outdoor exercise caused quite a stir among the soldiers and their wives and drove her husband mad with jealousy. Paul Mansfield struck a deal with his wife. If she could wait out his two-year tour of duty, they would move to Hollywood and make a go of Jane's dreams. Initially on board with Jane's aspirations, Paul Mansfield moved his small family to Los Angeles. Soon, however, Paul would come to hate the idea of Jane becoming a star as her pursuit of her career pushed him further and further into the background of his wife's life. Incredibly intelligent and possessing superhuman ambition, Jane Mansfield mapped her every career move like a general planning and assault. By the 1950s, the public's conception of ideal womanhood was a voluptuous platinum blonde. Marilyn Monroe set the standard for the mid-century sex symbol, and thousands of would-be starlets followed her lead. With her 40 22 35 figure, Mother Nature had given Jane Mansfield a leg up, while a bottle of peroxide would do the rest. Jane Mansfield took the concept of the blonde bombshell and turned it up to 11. But even in an era when bigger was always better, her curves proved a bit too dangerous to some. As recounted in a 2003 episode of the BBC documentary series Living Famously, Mansfield's stunning looks had scored her numerous titles, ranging from Miss Photo Flash and Miss Cadillac to Cherry Blossom Queen and Queen of the Palm Springs Desert Rodeo. Yet her physical assets were just a bit too hot for commercial advertising. The official Jane Mansfield licensing website, janemansfield.com, quotes photographer Gary Lester on one of Mansfield's first professional modeling gigs, which was a photo shoot for General Electric. Lester recalled, General Electric notified me that they had to cut her out of the picture because she looked too sexy for 1954 viewers. Jane Mansfield's first marriage would not survive her quest for stardom. Just four months after arriving in California, Jane and Paul Mansfield separated. Cracks in their marriage had begun to show during their time at Camp Gordon. According to biographer Raymond Strait, Paul Mansfield had hoped that marriage and motherhood would quell his wife's ambitions. By the time Paul left for Korea, the marriage was effectively over. The marriage collapsed under the strain of emotional and financial struggles brought on by the Mansfield's move to California and Jane's single-minded pursuit of fame. Alleged infidelities on Jane's part also took a toll on Paul. Eventually, he gave Jane an ultimatum. It was him or her career. Soon, he was on his way back to Dallas. Jane Mansfield's ambitions finally began to bear fruit when she landed her first movie role in the 1955 film noir Female Jungle. That year would also find Mansfield making the first of many appearances in Playboy. Jane's semi-nude photo spread in the Famous Men's magazine gave Paul Mansfield what he hoped would be ammunition to gain custody of their daughter, citing it as evidence that Jane was an unfit mother. Jane Mansfield's final years were stained with tragedy and a struggle to remain relevant. Abandoned by the mainstream film industry, the few movie roles she could get were cheaply made exploitation fare. In 1964, Mansfield married theater director Matt Simber, who assured her that he could reignite her Hollywood career. The two-year union resulted in another child and Mansfield's final starring role in Simber's film Single Room Furnished. If Jane Mansfield had begun her career as a parody of Marilyn Monroe, it seemed that she was ending it as a parody of herself. Turning to drugs and alcohol to cope with a life and career that was rapidly careening out of control, Mansfield engaged in a volatile affair with her attorney, Sam Brody. Brody and Mansfield's relationship often devolved into drunken brawls, as recounted by biographer May Mann. Diminished to performing in a gaudy traveling nightclub act, Mansfield's career and life were on borrowed time. 
On the morning of July 29, 1967, Jane Mansfield, Sam Brody, driver Ronnie Harrison, and three of Mansfield's children were en route from Biloxi, Mississippi to New Orleans. Mansfield was scheduled for an appearance on local TV. At around 2 a.m., the party's car collided with the rear of a tractor trailer. Shrouded in a fog of pesticide, the looming danger was virtually invisible. The three adult occupants were killed instantly, though the children survived. One of her children, Mariska Hargitay, would later go on to star in NBC's long-running crime procedural Law & Order Special Victims Unit. Jane Mansfield was just 34 years old.